first of all, before I move into the seven steps, <clears throat> I think it's just important to understand what we mean by the word innovation. I think a lot of people misunderstand it or misuse it. So innovate, in the, in the dictionary, is, is to introduce something new to the environment or make changes. And innovation is the action of pro, uh, the action of, of actually innovating. Now, innovation is not just another word for inventing. And I often think people confuse inventing with being innovative. Innovative, and here's a proper definition from a, <coughs> from a good source, it's the business of translating an idea or invention into a good or service that creates a value. So it's making money from concepts or ideas. It's nothing to do with bright ideas. It's actually making money. And to be called an innovation, an idea must be uh, able to be manufactured or provided at an economical cost and satisfy a market need. I think you'll agree there's many innovations that don't... Uh, sorry, many inventions that never satisfy a market need. So... Innovation takes many forms. It covers many different sectors. Low-cost commodity manufacture, producing step-change products, advanced manufacturing technology, even global supply chains. So I'm going to concentrate really on developing technical solutions in a manufacturing context, but just remember that these steps can apply to other forms of market and, and, um, and product. So what are the, step one, what are the key elements of successful innovation? And if you don't understand this as a business, you probably will either struggle or fail. So the key things in no particular order are leadership. Do you have a champion for this thing that you're trying to take forward? the people and culture in your organisation, and it's very important to empower your people to think creatively. Don't expect them to work like a flock of sheep following the leader. You need process and programme management. And by process, I mean you need a plan. Don't think that you're going to get from A to B with a successful conclusion if you don't have a very good plan. You need constancy of purpose, so don't be diverted. <clears throat> Stick to the plan. You need some skill in picking winners, because not everything you start off with is going to be a success. Don't be afraid to stop if things are looking bad. So if they are going to, to look bad, be prepared to walk away. And of course, timing is vital. You might have the very best idea in the world, but if the market is in a bad state, don't try and launch it at that time. So step two, ideas generation. You need to identify a problem, a need, or a market opportunity. And this is where you're really relying on market pull to help your innovation succeed. You'll see many companies that develop technology and try market push, and it doesn't work. Listen to your employees and customers. They are important sources of information. Horizon scan. Look around the world at what's going on. Monitor what your competitors are doing. And don't converge on a choice too quickly. Take your time. Step three, you need to screen the ideas and select one. And this is not just a toss a coin or stick a pin in a piece of paper. This is a process. You need to evaluate the commercial opportunity. You need to have a realistic assessment of your organisational capabilities. That's both your people and your equipment. So that includes technical, manufacturing, marketing and sales. You need to estimate the cost and time for development and launch. And put that against the market requirement. Are you going to be there in time? Are you going to be too soon? You need to evaluate your competitors and barriers to market entry. You might have the best solution in the world, but if you're up against a very well-established competitor, they will find a way of closing the market down for you. 
you need to assess the risks. And of course, Brexit is a, an interesting risk at the moment. So political, geographical, economic and technical risks. And having taken all that into account, you choose what you're going to do based on whatever competitive advantage you can see that you have and on the best return on, on investment. So don't choose something that's brilliant, but it's not going to actually pay its way. Step four, you then have to take this chosen idea and develop the concept and test it. And if you're familiar with technology readiness levels and manufacturing readiness levels, this means taking it from pretty low down in the TRLs across to the top TRL when it's fit for market. <clears throat> this is a serious undertaking and this is where you need a detailed plan. This plan will say what you're going to do, in what order, how you're going to address risks, what resources you need. You need buy-in from the organisation. There are many good ideas that have failed because segments of an organisation have not bought into it. You need a professional project manager. You need to allocate sufficient resources. If you can't do that, don't start. Time to market is key. Then you need good communication and motivated teamwork. So there's a big job for the leadership there. Eventually, this work will produce what I'd call a laboratory demonstrator. Don't confuse that with a product or a proven process. This is where the UK is very good at producing these lab demonstrators. It's the next steps that are important. So step five is essentially to cross the valley of death. Has anybody heard of the valley of death? That's going from TRL level four to seven. While you're doing this, you've got to avoid mission drift, thinking, oh, there's a quick way of exploiting this. Make sure you've got key milestones and gateways at each of the TRL levels. And at the end of TRL 7, you'll have a prototype that's been fully evaluated and tested in the market in an operational situation. Step 6, you need to do some test marketing. So you've got a product that's fit for purpose. You need to go to some strategic customers and say, what do you think to this? If they don't like it at this point, you know you've got a problem. Finalise your marketing strategy and your launch plan. Agree your priority markets and agree your production ramp-up. So final stage is what I would call commercialisation. This is where you take this product into production. So this is TR level 8 and 9. Your production capability is commissioned. You've done your market launch and you're starting your production ramp-up. So those seven steps are taken from a variety of sources... Not everybody will agree with them. Not everybody will use all seven steps. But in my experience, you can go from a concept or a, an existing product and modify that to produce a successful next-generation product uh, in this very competitive world. Thank you.